Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm talking about color, color choices, and picking your color palette so that you can have the atmosphere and the mood that you want in your pieces. I've recently realized that that I don't think I'm portraying my my colors in a way that really tells the full mood or the full story that I want to tell. So I I've wanting to reacquaint myself with with being a little bit more thoughtful with my colors and some of the techniques that I've kind of forgotten over time that helps me to be able to pick good colors that tell what I want it to tell. I've also recently watched a class over on Skillshare that was extremely helpful, very eye-opening, and it did give me a few new techniques and tools on picking my colors. So I'll definitely be talking a bit about that class, but, but speaking of Skillshare, they are today's video sponsor. I do wanna give a huge thank you to them because I love their community. I love all of the amazing classes you can find over there. You can go over there and find thousands of classes dedicated to creative endeavors, whether it is art or whether it's the business of art or so many other different avenues that you can express yourself creatively. I, I love being able to go there and find classes that are specifically on things that I'm thinking about or struggling with, like today where I've been thinking and struggling with colors and my color choices, there was this perfect class over there that I was able to study and learn from. And uh, yeah, it's just an incredible place to find a lot of really useful resources. So I can give you a little coupon code down in the description that'll take you over to Skillshare and give you two months free so you can test it out. You can go watch the class that I'm going to talk about today. You can go check all that out. But, but yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right in with with this piece and with the things that I learned about color choice. Oh, I did want to say really quickly though that I do have prints available of her as well. I'm really happy with how she turned out. I print her on a very high quality matte cotton paper so that she looks very close to the original. So if you want to check that out and get a print for yourself, there's a link in the description that'll take you to my shop. But okay, that's it. Let's go ahead and jump into actual painting. So the class that I did watch over on Skillshare was from Victo Nye and she, had a lot of really helpful points that immediately I was like, wow, that's that's me as far as things that you're not doing quite right. Or she talked about at one point at the beginning, some, some usage of color that isn't as helpful, uh, depending on exactly what you want to tell with your work. But, but she mentioned where you can go in and just end up having saturated color everywhere. And that is certainly something that, that I do. I kind of go all out. And really, I would like to be able to move into a place where I can get much moodier, rich, smoky, stormy kind of colors. And then where there are saturated colors, they really stand out and they have this impact. It, it gives a little bit more power to the saturation that I want to choose and a little bit more control over that. So, so immediately when she started talking about that at the beginning of class, I'm like, this is a class for me. This is exactly what I've been thinking about and struggling with. So. So yes, again, I, I highly recommend going and checking out her, her class and see what she has to say and see if, see if anything connects with the way that you work. But, but specifically, there's a few techniques that, that I actually learned in school when I was taking my, I think it was color and design class, but she mentioned it again and it just reawakened some of those techniques that I had learned and forgotten about. And, and one of those big things is to go through art that you love and pick out the color palettes from those pieces. So like she mentions, and I thought this was a really good point, is that you can go through and find color palettes from paintings or artwork that is completely different stylistically from where you're at. So if you're, if you're looking at things that are very close to what you're already creating and you're looking at color palettes that are very close, then it can easily end up where you're starting to create pieces that look very similar to specific other artists that are in your same genre. But, but if you're going out there and looking at classical paintings or abstract paintings or anything else out there, or landscapes, and you're able to pick out those colors, then it becomes something very different and new. And I actually found that really helpful because that is something that I want to make sure that I balance, but I also really want to be able to learn from, from all of these amazing painters that came before me, but their skill and the way that they work is so far above and different from what I'm working on. But the color palette, that is so easy to digest. That's so easy to, to take away from and then immediately apply it into my work. So at the very beginning, that's actually right what I did to start working on this piece. I had four little color comps that I had actually already gone through a bunch of different paintings 
and found different color comps that had the atmosphere and the feeling that I want, not color comps, paintings that had the atmosphere that I wanted. And then I quickly basically jotted down the colors, the core colors that I had in watercolors. That way I could go back and then put those down into the color comps exactly where they needed to be. And I think this specific technique was particularly helpful because I already had an idea in my head what I wanted the basic storytelling color palette to be for this piece. So I, I knew that I wanted the background to be smoky, cool toned, a little stormy. And then that allowed me to go through other paintings that had this more hidden, mysterious, I guess you could say, atmosphere to it and did have a base in this kind of more cool gray kind of background or, or an area that had a lot of that kind of color. So that helped me to really pinpoint a lot of specific color palettes rather than going in blind and just having basically an endless supply of paintings to draw from. This, because I already knew what I wanted to say with it, it just helped me to see a very fine-tuned approach that other artists had to achieve that look and that, that meaning to their piece. And the balancing of saturated and non-saturated colors, or less saturated colors I should say, is something that I did learn way back in school where we talked about making sure that the the focal points that those have either a contrast in value or contrast in saturation, that, that way they really stand out and the eye goes to them. But somewhere along the way, I kind of like let that bloom out of control so that I wanted everything to be really bright and saturated. And um, I think that at least in this piece, I've gotten a little bit better at it. <laughs> so with having the background that is a little bit more of this smoky grayed out blue or at least closer to grayed out than I normally would have picked. I do think that it really helps the skin color of the character, this like very red pink base. I think that it really helps it feel a lot more crisp and saturated and it pops off and it, it helps her face become much stronger of a focal point. It also helps that her hair is a darker value than the background, but they're also very similar color families. So, so we actually have kind of this, this deal where the background is a little bit lighter than her hair. So her hair has more pop from it. It's popping off because it's a lot darker, but it's the same color. So they group together and then her face and the hair are completely different saturations and values. So then there's even more contrast there. So as you get closer to the center of the piece, there's becomes more and more contrast and that really does help. I think it read better and it helps the eye know where to go. So I don't know. I feel, I feel a lot happier with this than say if I had gone in with just like a really saturated blue for the background, it would have been a completely different animal than it would have been a really light, bright blue that would have been competing for the attention of the, the pure color of red and pinks in her skin that would have really drawn away from that. I do want to really quickly though, talk about the watercolor technique that I used for this piece and kind of the execution of it. So I've been feeling really like I've just been rushing through my watercolors and I'm not getting the, the detail and the precision that I want out of it. So I've been trying to really just slow down, be careful with the washes and build them up over time. And I'm so much happier with this piece than I've been in a really long time as far as the, the luminosity of the watercolors and the layering and the glazing. And, and I feel really good about that. So like with her skin, I, I tried to be a lot more careful about, again, building up the layers, which is one of the things that makes painting skin in watercolors really perfect and beautiful because it's transparent layers that's very similar to how skin actually appears in real life. So I, I feel so much happier with the way that I executed her face on this piece. And I, I think I've been able to achieve it in probably ever, but I do feel like the background is the thing that technique wise, I, I think that was eye opening for something that I really need to practice. So, so in the little color comp that I was working off of, I loved how the background looked. It was mostly smooth with a few large textural elements where, where it bloomed from the water and I thought it looked so beautiful. But then when it came time to trying to apply that to this much larger piece, that kind of texturing and the way that it actually interacted with the piece and the character just completely changed. It became lots of very small textures. So it became overall very textured. The texture was no longer a, not a focal point, but 
it wasn't distinct. It, it became an overall texture. And I think that's something that I need to just cut out some pieces of paper and really practice very large washes where I can either get very perfectly smooth ones, but also smooth ones with those blooms of texture in them. And then also ones that have much more overall, but larger textures to it. That way I can have a control over it and I can actually achieve the look that I want. So, so in the end, I'm actually, I'm okay and happy with how this looks, including the background, but comparing it with what I, I kind of wished it had ended up happening. It, it certainly opens my eyes to things that I need to work on. And I don't know, that's really actually, it's very exciting to think about because I, I love being able to practice a little like washes and just playing with watercolors. And really at the end of the day, that's, that's what that is. What I need to practice is just playing with my watercolors. And I haven't done that for a while. So, so yes, that'll be good. That'll be my next homework assignment. And don't forget to check out Skillshare if you're interested. There is the link down in the description. So the first 500 people get two months free, so you can go check that out. I also have a link to my shop so you can get prints of this piece. I am really happy with how she turned out. So I would love to be able to send you one. There's also the original painting there as well. And I also have a link to my Patreon, which I actually have a really exciting announcement that I'll be announcing over there very soon. So if you wanna go check that out and see what's up, I, uh, I do have a link in the description. I do want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. So thank you guys so much. But, but that's it for today. I will be back next week with more art content. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram so you can get more in-between content. But, but that's it. So I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>